This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, here on the Election Command Center, the new patriotic party, the majority in parliament, is at the Supreme Court seeking an interpretation to Article 971D and also to restrain the Speaker from declaring vacant the seats of members of parliament who have filed to contest as independent candidates and an independent candidate seeking to contest on the ticket of the NPP. That's a former member of parliament. There was a lot that happened in parliament today. And this is your election command center. No, the two sides of parliament earlier today thrown into spirited arguments for and against that motion filed by uh, the member of parliament for the Tamale South constituency, Harun Idrisu, the former minority leader, contesting that point that there are four members of parliament, sitting MPs, who cannot continue to hold themselves as MPs based on the precedence of what's happened in the House in the case of the former member of parliament and that decision taken by the former Speaker of Parliament, Right Honourable, uh, that's Aaron Michael Quay. Now, this debate got a number of the lawyers who are MPs throwing back and forth. We're going to get into why the majority leader, Alexander Penyomakin, has headed to the Supreme Court seeking interpretation of Article 97. But this is what happened in Parliament earlier today. Of the standing orders of this House on a matter of public importance. The Speaker, it has come to our notice that the Honorable Peter Kwache Aka, the current NDC member for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, has filed with the Electoral Commission to contest as an independent candidate. The Honorable Amuakun Esiama, the current independent member for Formina Constituency in the Ashanti Region, has filed with the Electoral Commission to contest also as an NPP candidate. The Honorable Cynthia Mamle Morrison, the current Member of Parliament for Agona West constituency in the Central Region, has filed with the Electoral Commission to contest as an independent candidate. The Speaker, the Honorable Kojo Asante, the current NPP Member of, for Suhum constituency in the, in the Eastern Region, has also filed with the Electoral Commission to contest as an independent candidate. So, Speaker, a similar matter involving Honorable Andrew Amuakun Isiama was referred to this House by the new patriotic party, the NPP, in November 2020. The NPP argued that by his decision to contest as an independent candidate Whilst he was a certain NPP member of parliament, the Honorable Esiama had vacated his seat in accordance with Article 971G of the Constitution. The then Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Michael Quay, upheld the NPP's position and took an action to enforce Article 971G of the Constitution and ruled that the NPP member of parliament for Formina Den had vacated his seat by his decision and conduct, and hence ceased to be a certain member of parliament. Mr. Speaker, this ruling was not contested and has still not been contested and remained good and valid as a rule of this House. Right Honorable Speaker, we therefore call on you to enforce the existing ruling of this House based on Article 971G and H. That decision, Mr. Speaker, applies to all four ex-members of parliament, namely Honorable Peter Kwachiaka, Honorable Andrew Amuaku Esiama, Honorable Cynthia Mamle Morrison, and Honorable Kodo Asante. Mr. Speaker, on the basis of this fact, this, these persons, namely Honorable Peter Kwachiaka, Andrew Amuaku Esiama, Honorable Cynthia Mamle Morrison, and Honorable Kodo Asante, are deemed to have vacated their seat accordingly. Right, Honorable Speaker, this means that currently we do not have an independent member of parliament. 
Well, that's the minority leader, Dr. Kessler, to forcing there. But there are a number of issues at play in this matter, and we've been looking at it quite closely. Dennis Barberi Wadam, Esquire, is joining me in studio. It's good to have you as always. Now, what it's a pleasure to be here, Alfred. With, with, with this demand uh, and what is happening in Well, Parliament I mentioned today. yesterday that when Parliament resumes, so we're going to run into yet another long legal tussle. And it started on the floor of Parliament today. I mean, it was more of the lawyers having a debate on the floor of Parliament, and at the point... Uh, the majority leader had to point out to Kisla to I mean, Dr. Kisla to Forsen, that this is a conversation for lawyers. So we should keep quiet and listen to them. That was just on a lighter note. Indeed. But these are the MPs that are on the table or for the reason for which we are having this discussion. Mm -hmm. As rightly listed by the right honorable member for minority leader, um, Kojo Asanti, the MP for Suhum, mm -hmm. Cynthia Mamli Morrison, MP for Agona West. We have the Honorable Andrew Esiama Amwako, who is the MP for Formina, very famous. Um, and then Peter Yao Kwachi Aka, the MP for Amenfi Central. This is an NDC MP who wants to in contest as an independent candidate. But what set the ground for the discussion was that statement that was made by the minority leader, mm. bringing to the attention of the House these MPs and what they intend to do. He makes reference to a precedent that has been set in the House right. and to that extent says that um, it, 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 it invariably means that they were going to leave Parliament today with the NDC now being the majority in the House and the MPP being the minority if that president was to be adhered to. Mm. But of course, that, it, it, it didn't end there. And um, the majority side did not take kindly to that line of argument. First was the majority leader who, in fact, um, started off by saying that the facts in issue are different. That is to say... The precedent that the NDC MPs sought to rely on, i.e., that had to do with the uh, Professor Mike O'Quiz ruling on the Formula MP back then, was different from the facts before the House today. In that, in that particular instance, as we applied to in the Formula MPs case, mm -hmm. a petition from the party was made to Parliament to notify Parliament that this person who had served notice to go independent is no longer a member of our party right. and to that extent invoke article 97 and declare the, the, the seat vacant. Um, the majority leader argued that in this particular instance they did not have any petition before the house to that effect. For that reason the facts were different. He went ahead to notify the house that he had already gone ahead to file a suit at the Supreme Court seeking an interpretation to article 97 and also to also restrain the house from declaring the seat vacant. He also raised some procedural issues as to how they ought to have come before the House, arguing that the manner in which the minority leader came before the House, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not known to Parliament. Right. It ought to have used a different approach altogether. He also raises the issue of um, natural justice to say that even if indeed these members of Parliament in question were said to have been in uh, violation of the said article, they ought to be heard. And to that extent, if they were not even in the House in the first place, to what extent would they declare their seats vacant in their absence? So essentially, those were the issues that were raised by the majority leader. Then came the um, member of parliament for Bolgatanga East, the former deputy attorney general, um, Dominic Ayini. For him, he explained the implications of Article 97. And further, he, for him, he holds the view that the petition that the majority leader was talking about, that is to say that the parties in question ought to have sent a petition to Parliament to notify Parliament that the members are no longer part of their parties and to that extent that their seats should be declared vacant. He thought it wasn't necessary because mm -hmm. the Article 70, 97 in itself was very categorical. The circumstances under which an MP would vacate his or her seat. They also make uh, references to that Michael Quay ruling which we looked at yesterday. So like I said, it was, it was, it was a conversation amongst lawyers. Indeed. This is a former Attorney General. Um, Jogate. Jogate, yes. Mm. So for him too, he also raises the same issue about the procedure. He makes the case that procedure is just as important as a substantive matter. And right. to the extent that the, he didn't think that the minority came with the right procedure. Even beyond that, he also makes the case that even though there is a precedent in the House, it is quite different from what operates in the courts, where the lower courts are bound by the decision of the higher courts. He says that in Parliament, the rules allow that even when there's a decision, the speaker has that liberty to depart from that and not necessarily be bound by what the predecessor had said. So, 
largely, these were some of the arguments that were canvassed in the House. But ultimately, the Speaker said something very interesting before asking for more time to make a reasoned ruling. And if you've been paying attention to Speaker Alban Bagbin, each time a contentious issue comes before him, he asks for time to give what he says usually is a reasoned ruling. So this time he's asking for 48 hours? Yes, 48 hours, two, hour, two, two days, and yeah. he'll be back with that reasoned ruling. But before he said that, let's listen to exactly what he said. Honourable members, I have listened to the comments from members after the minority leader submitted before the House a statement under Order 93. Both the statement and the comments have raised quite serious issues of procedure and substantive law. And I think I need time to go through them. Because what I believe is that do unto others as you want others to do unto you. And when you plant evil, you reap evil. And so I want to take a few days to submit a reasoned ruling in this matter. I see that this is not only an urgent matter, but a very serious national issue. And there's good reason why the constitutions after the 1960 constitution. So please, having gone through all these constitutions, and having gone through all these parliaments in the, in the Fourth Republic, and having experienced all what you have stated, I think I'll have to do justice to the subject. And so I need to present to you a very well thought out ruling, so that tomorrow I will not either be crucified or hailed, but the right thing would have been done. This is the right thing would have been done. Yes, so do unto others what you want done to you, and that if you sow evil, you reap evil. As to what that means, we wait to hear from the speaker when he makes that seasoned ruling, I mean reasoned ruling. But there was also another issue that came up. I mean, what the argument of Atacha was very interesting. He started off by saying that, you know, because the minority leader ended his statement by saying that the NDC was now in the majority and the MPP in the minority, then Atacha says that if the NDC wants to be in the, in the majority, there's only one way to do that, and that is to prepare and go for the December 7 polls. But he, don't under, he does not understand why they want to use the speaker to get into the majority. So the speaker should not fall to the temptation. Should not fall to the temptation. And that's yeah. he also made another uh, coded, the, coded language. A biblical as reflection yes. of, of, of that, in a way. So largely, that has been it. But just to say that um, Professor Mike Eronoko has been speaking on mm. this particular matter because it is his ruling that has become the subject of contention now as being the president. Mm. But he was asked the question as to whether, I mean, indeed, if that's, he still stands by what um, he had said then, and if the action of the man, minority group is right. He says that because the action does not inure to the benefits, I mean, because the, 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 the action now we are dealing with mm -hmm. is not detrimental to the minority, it cannot be, it, it does not lie with them to make that move. So essentially, going essentially, back to that point about Because in his case, it was the MPP that petitioned 
that remove our own member. But you know why the MPP So will not he do says that? that because the, mem the, the three members are not members of the NDC, it does not lie with them to make that move to remove them. But now it raises another question yes. as well. So the coming days are that. going to be interesting because there are already questions as to whether the issues about injunction, whether parliament in itself will be restrained from even making this move again. There's also the question of even if the, if the court itself would want to get into that space, especially so that arguments have been made that parliament is the master of its own rules and all that. So the coming days... It's in going to be fact, very interesting. It is, it is all of these that is at play that we bring in a uh, constitutional lawyer, uh, private legal practitioner, Justice Abdullahi. Justice Abdullahi, appreciate your time. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. With all the issues as referenced by Dennis and the, the different sides as to now Parliament having to banter with the courts and uh, this, uh, whether the speaker can be restrained from going on this path, and then also the interpretation and true and proper interpretation of Article 97 1G as the majority leader is at the Supreme Court seeking. Would all of this, as it plays out, truncate that process of having these four persons as members of Parliament expelled from the House? My understanding of the events that unfolded today is that um, on the basis of a, um, of a writ allegedly filed by the, the majority leader um, seeking to, as it were, injunct parliament from proceeding with the hearing of the application or, what, or the motion to remove the four members of parliament, or the petition to remove the former members of parliament should be put on hold, more or less. I, I think, um, for most um, constitutional law students, um, this would clearly be a complete surprise if the speaker actually um, holds onto his horses um, simply on the basis of the writ. Or that has been filed at the Supreme Court. Um, and I think, once again, that is Constitutional Law 101 would tell you that um, the courts have no business in Parliament. The courts, um, um, parliamentary business are closed door and closed books, as we call it, and to, to, the, to the courts. And so... Um, I, at this moment, I mean, it's difficult to comment on the whatever rate has been filed and then also project into what may possibly come up. But um, without any shred of imagination or doubt, um, I do not think that um, it could go far um, based on the time-tested acceptable principles of constitutional law regarding these areas. Um, of course, we can understand that there is politics into these, I mean, there is politics and then there, there is the, the law aspects of it. But I, I do not foresee the possibility of the speaker um, simply throwing in the towel and saying that he would want to wait for the Supreme Court to make a determination of whatever has been brought before it. I, I don't foresee that happening. I see the speaker simply I'm ignoring or, or throwing away the 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 um the intervention of the majority and proceeding to hear the motion. Um, as to whether the motion would go in favor, the motion itself would be um, uh, decided in favor of the majority or the minority. Uh, it's a different issue that completely cannot be um, 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 influenced by uh, this intervention that has been made I see. by the by the majority leader, right. and without any shred of doubt, I do not think that the the suit are filed at the Supreme Court should or can or ought to even prevent the continuous progress of the uh, the petition in Parliament. Uh, we'll see how the coming days will look like, uh, Justice Abdullahi. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. And the 48 hours started counting already. And it's a clear reason why the NPP would not write this time around to the speaker to have these three sitting NPP MPs expelled. It's about the numbers. This 
8th Parliament, 137, 138, technically, they will be shooting themselves in the foot if they decide to do that. But this is one to watch. 